everybody, welcome. My name's Richard, and it's another day on the road with the Tesla Model 3 Highland. So, uh, this is the long range version. Uh, only had it a few days, clocking up the miles, getting a real good handle on what it does, real world efficiency, real world range capabilities. And today, I'm going to be doing some charging as well. So, I'm going to see how fast it charges, how many miles of range you can add in, say, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of charging time. Uh, so again, this is real world usage uh, as we go about other work. We're actually in the process of uh, delivering a, a Jaguar I-Pace to a client in Cardiff. So it means we've just left a place called Burley Services. Uh, and I'm in convoy with Gintz who's driving the I-Pace. I'm in the Tesla. And we're going to drive along up the A34, along the M4, a long way round. That's about a 150 mile journey, in fact just over, to get to Cardiff. And then we've got to come back again. Now, we already did a video where we did the first range test on this. I left it 100% and it went easily over 300 miles without, without trying, you know, just driving, speed limit, heat on all day, chilly day. Uh, today, uh, very much the same thing really, um, but I deliberately left uh, not fully charged today. 79% uh, battery, stone cold, no preheating. It's only four degrees Celsius this morning, so it is even colder. Now, you've got to remember, by the way, we already know this car can do easily over 300 miles. We did that uh, test and it would be better in summer as well and you could do better if you try harder. But even the last car, uh, Model 3 long range, could do over 300 miles without trying too hard. And when you've got that kind of range, you are talking, you know, driving from the very south coast of England to Edinburgh with just one charge stop, which actually you just need about 20 minutes, you know, 30 minutes maximum it's more than you know your bladder <laughs> range you know so uh fantastic long distance cars easy to do this kind of stuff with uh but nonetheless i haven't done any uh real fast charging with this car yet so let's get that in today let's do some fast. i'll try and get to a point where i get it down to sort of a very low percentage plug it into a good tesla supercharger and let's see just how quickly this thing can charge as well at the end of this week, I would have covered the best part of a thousand miles. I spent a lot of hours in this car, so that's when I'm going to film my review of this car. One of the things I like, don't like, how it compares to the previous version of the Model 3, how I'm getting on with the stalks, uh, or lack of them, uh, and uh, things like that. So uh, I think it should be a very well considered review, having spent a lot of time, not just an afternoon in a press car, you know. So uh, that video is coming up soon, so make sure you are subscribed and you will see that video when it uploads. Hit the little bell icon for notifications. And that's coming very soon. Plus we've got loads of other testing. The Hardware 4 Park Assist coming up. Driving it in convoy alongside an older Model 3 Long Range coming up. What's this like on a road trip? The Highland to the Highlands coming up. So again, make sure you're subscribed. Just pulled into Lee Delamere Services on the um, M4 westbound. Have a look at some of these parking graphics here. Look, oops, sorry. There. Have a look at some of these parking graphics here. Pretty impressive stuff. We'll do a separate video about the parking graphics. Uh, so we're just going to top up the I pace. Neither is particularly need to charge, but we want to stop anyway, and we're going to just top that up before we drop it off. Um, so what's my trip on that then? So let me just pop it in park. So. Uh, 235 watt hours per mile, but since I left home this morning, stone cold battery 241 watt hours per mile. So not quite as efficient as the trip a couple of days ago. Uh, but you've got to remember this was from a stone cold start. It last charged yesterday. Uh, in fact, you can see that here, here. Um, and then it was just parked overnight and it was down to about three, four degrees overnight. So it was stone cold. Uh, the that trip a couple of days ago, I didn't preheat the battery before I left, but it was charging until I was just leaving actually. Um, although I'd be on a three pin, so a little bit, but it would have had a little bit of heat in the battery and it was a slightly milder day. Uh, this morning, obviously the heating's just working a bit harder. And I was running at about 245 watt hours per mile for quite a long time. And just in the last few miles, it started to uh, become more efficient as it's probably warmed up a little bit and it can scavenge heat from the battery to warm the cabin and that kind of stuff. Uh, so, um, not quite as efficient, but it is colder, but still actually pretty good considering the conditions. I mean, it's six degrees now. 
plenty of available charge. You can see there's, there's loads here for Tesla and there's a bank of grid served ones over there. Yeah, so it's saying here, if I just go as I am, win, there at the back, which is 2%. So I'll get it to allow like maybe, should we go 5%? Let's see what we get. Uh, so it's probably a, a bit over 150 miles, so on 50% battery. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Two hours later. We've gone down to 0% battery range. Oh, I've now got 53% battery and it's gonna say, I'm gonna to get to Winchester after going to Cardiff with 5%. I reckon that'll do it. Okay, let's unplug and we'll wait for the iPace. And the iPace at 35% is charging at 100 kilowatts. Let's uh, pull out the uh, services here. Hit the road again. Right, that last section uh, into Cardiff, over here we are now, um, was really efficient, partly because if anyone's driven on the M4 past Newport, there's a 50 miles per hour speed limit for a few miles, so that became really efficient. Uh, plus the battery was a bit warmer, so I actually averaged there since charge, 215, oops, as you might see it better on here, uh, since last charge, 216 watt hours per mile. Uh, so that's pretty good. Um, look, auto reverse, tap the brake, goes into reverse automatically. So now, um, if I bring up the map, let me just close the uh, parking sensor, go to park again. We're gonna go across to Winchester and we're due to arrive there with just 2% charge. Perfect, let's get the charging profile of this car. We've got 35% of the battery now and it's 127 miles to go. So let's see what we get and hit the road again. So 98 miles to go to the charger, 27% left and it was just coming up. It's just gone now, turn the camera on but it was saying stay below 65 miles per hour to reach destination. Nah, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, here's the, here's the bridge now. Uh, so actually we've come down out of the Welsh Valleys. Uh, we're doing 210 watt hours a mile, so very nearly five miles per kilowatt hour. And if you can do five miles per kilowatt hour, you're talking of over 350 mile range. In fact, you know, that's on 70 kilowatt hours times five, would be 350, but you've got about 75 kilowatt hours, 75 times five. Anyway, yeah, that'd be well over. I'm quite happy you could do over 350 miles in this car if you were just a bit sensible. Maybe just kick back to 65 miles an hour. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna stick to 70 as long as I can. If this says 2%, that's fine. I'm good with that. There it goes, look, stay below 65. If this starts dropping, I might just back off a little bit. I do want to get to the chargers with a really low state of charge. The only thing I'm thinking is whether it will still preheat. If you're going to get there with such a low amount, is it still going to use energy to preheat? Maybe not. We'll find out. Best way to find out, try it. <laughs> so we've just passed memory services, which is where we could have just popped in for a quick top up charge. But we're going to push on to Winchester and uh, get there as low as possible really so we can do a proper charge. So we've got 10% battery left and 39 miles to go. Doesn't take too much maths, does it? That means we've got to go the equivalent of a 390 mile, 400 mile range out of this last 10%. So what I have done, look, I've just kicked it back to 60 with chill like chinchillas be fine no problem at all let's get the efficiency it'd be interesting to see what efficiency we can get out of it now we actually we're fighting it a little bit back there because we've been coming along the m4 lots of hills we're quite high up this is probably the bottom edge of the cotswolds uh but it looks like it's possibly downhill here but 210 watt hours per mile on this drive so far so nearly five miles per kilowatt hour and maybe that will improve with a bit of gentle driving let's just chill out be fine yeah. you worried Nah. <laughs> I know what you're, you're going to make it. Yeah, look, spare 1%, not a problem. That's the buffer. No, we're in no rush. We're actually just, we've not got anything else to do this afternoon. We're not picking up another car. It's only five to two. We can just chill. It's cool. Got all the time in the world. So we're in a 40 miles per hour roadwork zone here. So if we look at the last five miles, in fact, this was 55 watt hours per mile just now. It's now 71 watt hours per mile, but with a predicted range of over 100, on 9% battery, so that would be over a thousand miles of range if you're just in 40 miles per hour roadworks. According to that bit. <laughs> so, 
be crazy. If you just, I guess, if you just sat on a flat 40 miles per hour road, you'd be doing a few hundred, there yeah, for sure. So we're down to 4% battery, and we've just noticed that it's starting to reduce the power now. Uh, still got most of the power band, but there's a few dotted lines at the top right here, which means it's starting to limit the power available. Only 4% battery, of course. Okay, we're only uh, 1.6 miles from the charger now. Um, we're down to 1% battery. And we were just saying that the car doesn't seem bothered, you know. It knows we're going to the charger. Um, there's a little bit of power limit, but not much. So, considering how little it's power limited, it, it, there's obviously some buffer still, still within this, you know. Still, still, I'm still speeding. There you go. <laughs> I stick to the speed limit, uh, but they're pretty chill, really. Uh, we're pretty chill. Like we, we've done it before. We've driven the cars beyond zero deliberately for for videos, and they covered quite a few miles after zero, didn't they? I mean, was it about 18 miles or something like that? And that would be the buffer behind it. And I think that's why even now, with only one percent, the heating's on and the power's not really limited. And, it drives fine and the car's not giving us any warning messages so uh, look 201 watt hours per mile so five miles per kilowatt hour and what have we got usable about 74 75 kilowatt hours so five times 75 is good range <laughs> 375 mile range if you always drive at that now i'll admit obviously we did back off we took it gentle doing 60 65 some of the time chilling out but that means you can do that kind of range Heating on the whole time. So again, when we're in summer, it's 10 degrees now, but I mean, in the summer, this would be 350 mile range without really much sweat with it. Just driven, you know, nicely, but. Yeah. Right, so we've now driven past the chargers because we've still got 1%. We want to get it to zero. So we've gone right past that. Turns out there's like a road closure up here and we are. <laughs> Come on. But, you know, it was same 1%, we have got 1%, yeah, cool. The trouble is at this kind of speed in town, it doesn't really use much, does it? Heating's still on. Let's crank the heating up now, let's use it all up. Let's use it up. 26, there we go. Let's get it warm. There we go. Arrival 0%, perfect. There we go. We've still got 1%, it's still no good. Okay, so after driving around an extra little lap, we've gone down to 0% battery range. There's only a tiny bit of power restriction. There's still plenty of power. The heating's going. In fact, we turn the heating up to use the energy up. So I floor it. That's still good, isn't it? There's no problem with this. No. Uh, right, so now we're going to plug in a charge. It's 1447, 0% battery. It hasn't been set, telling us it's been doing any uh, preheating for charging. And if we look at the trip for the last segment of the journey, it says 0% for battery conditioning. So this would appear that because it knew we were going to arrive with very little charge, it didn't use energy to heat the battery to make charging faster. So we're going to go from 0% to 100%, but this won't be the fastest it could do it because normally it would preheat and therefore you would charge faster. But let's just see what happens. So we're going to rig the camera up on the screen and I need the toilet so it's not muck around. Okay, so speeding up the charging process here, uh, but let's start pulling some figures from it. Now, it got to 10% in just two minutes there. That really didn't take long at all. We saw a peak charging speed of 238 kilowatts, but it can do 250, even over 250, if it has the preheating available to it. So we'll do some more tests on that another day. But let's take the worst case efficiency we've had from this car, about 250, 245 watt hours per mile. Let's say four miles per kilowatt hour, about the worst case. It means that we can add 100 miles of charge in 10 minutes here. We can add 200 miles of charge in 21 minutes. That's all it takes. Now we see that on that drive there, when we drove efficiently, kind of 60, 65, we got five miles per kilowatt hour. That doesn't mean you've got to drive at 60 on a motorway one of these, it's super efficient anyway. But if a lot of your driving is uh, town or A roads and B roads, you maybe live more rurally, I've seen that number easily without trying, 200 watt hours per mile, five miles per kilowatt hour, and that would give this car a total range of 375 odd miles. It really can be efficient, and that's now in winter, it's obviously going to improve as we get into summer. So from all that, we can pinpoint a few key facts from this car. Worst case range I've had out of this is about 300 miles of range. Best case, about 375 miles of range. So that's 480 to 600 kilometers of real world range. And you can add 200 miles of range in 20, 21 minutes. 
Now, if you take the 300 plus another 200 miles of range, 500 miles, that's the same as Calais to Geneva with one 21 minute charging stop. And I think most people would agree, even the diehard ice fans would say, you're probably gonna stop for a 20 minute stop to have a coffee. And certainly if you're driving a petrol diesel, you're probably gonna have to stop and refuel, which takes 10 minutes of that at least. At least with this, you can go off and actually have a coffee while you're doing it. So, you know, it's real world, long range capability is phenomenal with this. Uh, now we did see that that um, charging process there, that it, the speed really does tail off in the upper quarter of the battery. So above about 75% it gets quite slow. That's quite normal. Most electric cars would do that. And that's not normally what you do. You wouldn't normally sit at a charger and go to 80, 90, 100%. Anyway, we did for this test and actually to go from zero to very 100% actually took an hour and 10 minutes. That last bit was incredibly slow. But again, I will reiterate that's not something you normally do. I don't want to be quoted saying it takes an hour and 10 minutes to charge one of these. You can add 200 miles of range in 21 minutes. That's the key fact to take out of this. Um, now, we added 77 kilowatt hours into the battery. Now, it probably didn't physically add that into the battery because there's some losses and heat losses. It's probably got about 74 kilowatt hours actually put into the battery, roughly speaking. Uh, but you lose a, you know, an extra bit of just some heat losses in the cable. But uh, we just spent 77 kilowatt hours. Uh, so what did that cost? Well, that was 34 pence per kilowatt hour at that Winchester site on that day at that time. Different supercharging sites will vary for pricing and times of day. Sometimes it's cheaper than home electric if you do a night charge. Um, but let's take that. It's a fairly average price at the moment on Tesla supercharger, 34 pence per kilowatt hour, 26 pounds that charge session. I think that's pretty reasonable for 300, 350 miles of driving. Now, if you do that kind of charging at home, zero to 100%, what's the most you can put into it? And you have an overnight tariff because you have an electric car and it's seven pence per kilowatt hour, it's gonna cost you a Grand total of £5.39. So there we have it. Uh, yeah, you can't really argue with that, I don't think, can you? I mean, we really are at the stage where the range of these cars is longer than a bladder. You're going to need to stop for coffee, and at least when you plug this in, you can go off and do other things. It's a lot cheaper than petrol and diesel. Uh, so the Model 3 Long Range, look, fantastic car, it really is, and done a couple of long days in it now, and uh, it's just been great on both occasions. So, um, Six days into owning this car, nearly a thousand miles on the clock already. Uh, so I think the next thing we'll film is my review of this car now that I've really spent a lot of time in it. And uh, with that, I'll say what I like and don't like and how I'm getting on without uh, indicator stalks and a lack of parking sensors. And then following on from that, we'll also do videos about the hardware camera for parking sensors and some other road trips and maybe some charging when it does uh, preheat for supercharging and you arrive at say 10% or 7%, something like that. Um, like you probably normally would for most people. Uh, so there's loads more coming up and make sure you stay subscribed. But uh, thank you to everyone who's been watching our channel and the videos on the Highlands so far. There's more to follow.